Okay, we are now being recorded, I believe. Okay. Welcome everybody. Welcome. To, we are the Genealogical Research Institute of Virginia. Um, let's see. Okay, got something else. Um, one thing I, I, I've got to tell us. Uh, to, <laughs> we we do lots of programs like this, and we have a couple of special interest groups. I'm going to talk about each one of them in just a second. Uh, almost everything is free to attend, except our, our usually for the fall conferences, which is uh, we were just chatting about. We're going to have Mark Lowe in October ish. We don't have a date yet, so I don't have a slide for it, but uh, watch our, our emails for news about that. But anyway, most are free to attend, but your contribution helps us bring them to you. And plus, you've received our quarterly newsletter, and you would get discounts to our paid events and to anything we decide to sell, which you will hear about again in a minute. Um, if you could just go to griva.org, there's a membership tab. Um, if you're interested, you can get our membership brochure, learn a little more about us, and, and join. So some of our upcoming events, our next one is the German Special Interest Group with Sylvia Eschinger. It's focusing on the Europe's German speaking countries and areas included in the one time German empire. It's usually the first Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. Uh, online for now. And the next one is April 6th. The topic is Denmark, Estonia, Slovakia, and more. There is a, uh, a link there, but it will also be in the next uh, Griva email you get from Emily. And I'm gonna put all of these links in the chat box as soon as I'm done talking. The next one is the DNA special interest group. That is the second Tuesday of most months at 7 p.m. That is led by me. And the next one is uh, the Tuesday, April uh, 13th. And I'm gonna be talking about ethics and privacy for DNA testing. And I promise I'll have better headphones for that next time. Sorry about that. Um, the next meeting that we have is from is from Ashley Ramey from the Library of Virginia on Tuesday, April 27th at 7 p.m. She's going to be talking about researching from home the digital collections of the Library of Virginia. So these are things that you can research at home in your jammies. So that should be like be interesting and lots of fun. That's Tuesday, April 27th at 7 p.m. After that, in May, we have David Givens talking about recent discoveries at Jamestown, bringing the 400-year-old site into the 21st century. Uh, it's going to be Tuesday, May 25th at 7 p.m. And before I introduce Cassandra, I'm actually going to, David, if you could unmute yourself and talk about the Gilmer maps. We actually have some prints of some Gilmer maps for sale, and he should be able to talk to you about that. Okay. We are fortunate indeed, as of last night, to have 550 maps left in inventory, um, covering 55 regions of Virginia. I say 55 because some maps are of one county and some maps are of multiple counties. Uh, some maps are of the southeastern Virginia, so it depends on what map you're looking at. Uh, these maps are drawn in wonderful detail. Um, in preparation for this, I went out to a county where my parents bought some property long ago in uh, Hertford, North Carolina. And that's surrounded by um, uh, Northampton County. And in the eastern part of, of Hertford, just to give you some idea of what I'm looking at on this map in detail, each individual house is drawn and a name written beside it as who the owner is. In an area called White Plains, which I've never heard of, there's J. Robertson, L. Archer, G. Hill, the Country Tree Store, such and such landing. And along every river, they marked off all the wharfs, all the landings, all the lodges, all the things that a marching army might need to know as they go back and forth. Um, and as you see on our tab on the screen, the Gilmer maps, there's a listing of the inventory of the counties and the maps that are available. Um, and an order form. So please take advantage of those. And with that, I'll turn it back to Paula. The, I hear the order form can be a little confusing. So I've just added a sample order form as, as a, just a, an example of, of what it might look like if I were actually placing an order. So that might help figure out like, wait, wait a minute, what's this one map is 25 or 30, the other maps. So we've got a couple of, of, of examples going on so you can get some ideas how to fill out the form. Uh, Griva members do get a discount. So again, like I said, becoming a member can, can be of advantage to you. 
um, and there's information on the order form how to join. So with that, now Cassandra is going to tell us all about the, the maps. She has been the senior map archivist at the Library of Virginia since 2005 and has curated a gallery exhibition and several one day map exhibitions and has written and published bibliographies, blogs, articles, and several entries for the Encyclopedia of Virginia. In addition, she's an adjunct instructor in history at the Virginia Community College System, serves on the board of directors for the Washington Map Society, and is a doctoral student at George Mason University. In fact, she told us she was gonna study just before this. So welcome, Cassandra, and let's hear what you have to say about the Gilmer Maps. I'm going to stop my share so you can start yours. Thank you, Paula, for that introduction. And um, it's nice to see everybody. I don't work on the second floor anymore. So um, some of you I don't get to see as much as I used to. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Can everyone see that? Yes. OK, excellent. And then let me go ahead. We're seeing a web screen and not your uh, part. Awesome. Oh, there it is. OK. Yes. There we go. Perfect. All right. Um, when Donna Shoemate approached me about um, presenting on Gilmer Maps, uh, I, I, I was very, um, very pleased to be able to say yes, because I use these maps all the time. And if you are able to acquire a paper copy, I say kudos to you because the paper copy for maps oftentimes is, is better than what you see online. And as I say that, I'm very thankful for the online images that are available through the Library of Congress because oftentimes that is the only way you would be able to access those materials. And so what I wanted to do this evening is talk a little bit about um, the men who were behind the creation of the maps um, speak to uh, uh, their history and also uh, explain the mindset behind why the maps were created and why the information that you see on the maps is there. And then I hope to end with two examples, giving you an opportunity to take a look at, at two maps, uh, the um, Gilmer map of Chesterfield, that is where Greve is still centered, right? in Chesterfield, and then one of King William County. And the reason why I chose King William County is because it's, the color is gorgeous. And it's not very, well, let me rephrase that. It's so cool when you find a manuscript map that has coloring, that's still vibrant, um, that hasn't faded. And so I thought I would show that as well. So the, the name of the maps is the Gilmer Maps of Virginia and North Carolina. I sometimes think that it should be called the Gilmer Campbell maps of Virginia and North Carolina, because one was the head honcho <laughs> over the Confederate Engineer Bureau, and the other one was in charge of topographical engineers actually overseeing the actual work done. So let's take a look at the, the those two men. Um, the first one, let's see if I can get this to work here. And if it goes to, Go back here. Here we go. The first person is Jeremy Francis Gilmer for, for whom the collection is, is named after. He uh, is, was actually a native of Guilford, North Carolina, and he graduated fourth in his class in West Point in 1839. And he was an experienced engineer to say the least. And when um, Virginia, seated from the Union in 1861, he resigned his commission. And as you can see on the screen, he was commissioned major of engineers in the CSA. And then he was assigned to the Army of Tennessee as the chief engineer on the staff of General Albert Sidney Johnston. He was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. And yes, I, I see that Lieutenant is still is not capitalized like it should be, and I apologize, and moved to Lee's Army of Northern Virginia in July of 1862. After that, he continues to rise in the ranks. He eventually becomes chief of the Confederate Engineer Bureau. And I think he was the, the third chief. Um, the, first, the first chief was his last name, I think was Ledbetter. 
the second was Reeves. And then when Gilmer became um, the third chief, he remained in that position until the end of the war. He was promoted to major general, but he stayed in that position because he was really, really good at his job. He was an effective administrator and cleaned things up. And that's exactly what, what the Confederacy needed at that time was someone like a Jeremy Francis Gilmer. He was a part of Thomas, excuse me, Jefferson Davis's um, escape from Richmond. And after things settled down from the end of the war, he eventually settled in Savannah, Georgia, where he was the president and engineer of the Savannah Gas Light Company. And he was also a director of or for the Central Railroad and Banking Company. And he was also a trustee for the Independent Presbyterian Church, which I find interesting since Greva does beat in a Presbyterian church in Chesterfield County. So that gives you a bit of background about Jeremy Francis Gilmer. He is, he is a He's a trained engineer. He's an experienced engineer. He has a solid military background. And to graduate fourth in your class from West Point, that is, that is, that's pretty good, I think. So who was Albert Henry Campbell? And yes, I see that Campbell is misspelled. That should only be one M. Um, I'm gonna blame that on the conversion from Microsoft to Google. So Mr. Campbell, it should be, just be Campbell, um, was born in Charleston, West Virginia. Um, and he, he earned his master's degree in engineering from Brown University in 1850, which I am impressed already. Um, anybody who can do math, I, I am impressed with. Anybody who can do higher math, I am really impressed with because <laughs> I can't do any of it. But he ended up becoming a civil engineer who specialized in railroad surveying and construction, and he had a stellar career in the 1850s. He was an assistant engineer for the Orange and Alexandria Railroad in, in Northern Virginia, um, and he took a position out west where he served as the principal assistant railroad engineer um, for the expedition, seeking an economical route from the Mississippi River to the Pacific coast along the 35th degree north latitude. That is a mouthful. When the war began, he resigned his position out west. He moved back from out west back to Virginia and he became the clerk in the Confederate Post Office Department. Someone must have discovered or saw his resume or realized that an experienced engineer was working in the post office and so he was commissioned a captain in the Confederate Army's Provisional Corps of Careers, Corps of, of Engineers. And by 1864, he had been promoted to major. But he became the chief of the topographical department of the Department of Northern Virginia. So you have Gilmer, who's the, the, the head of the Confederate Engineer Year Bureau, and then you have Campbell, who is the chief of the topographical department of the Department of Northern Virginia, which is basically the Army of Northern Virginia. And so you have two very skilled individuals working with maps for Virginia and North Carolina. When the war ends, um, Campbell eventually goes back to his engineering roots. He's working as an engineer again in 1869. Um, he and his family settle in West Virginia. I think he ends up traveling around the country as he did. I think he did work on railroads in Rhode Island and also along some of the railroad lines in, in um, West Virginia after the war. And of course, as you can see, he died in 1899. The Gilmer and Campbell oversaw the creation of hundreds of maps, hundreds of manuscript maps that were created during the war for the war effort. Well, Campbell was under the impression that after the fall of Richmond, the maps were, were completely lost. Um, they had been told to destroy the, to burn the field survey notes, which I cringe every time I think about that because those survey, those field survey notes would have been so helpful to historians today because it's from those survey records that the, the maps themselves would have, been, would have been made. So 
Campbell is underneath the assumption that the field survey notes were destroyed. He had um, taken all of his paperwork. He had a box or two of maps, other archives from his office that he sent with a, an engineer um, and to take, you know, to get him out um, of Virginia. And um, from what he understood, those boxes of maps and the other archival material from his office were lost. And then he had negatives of the uh, general maps in his collection um, from the Department of Northern Virginia who he gave to his private secretary who was, on, who was on traveling down through North Carolina into Georgia. And the gentleman, when they got into um, Georgia, he decided to hide the negatives in a lady's baggage. Um, in, in her bag. Apparently it must have been a huge bag. So he hit him in there. And then he heard that the next stop that they were going to be, um, their next stop is where union soldiers would be present to go through and um, basically sift through everyone's belongings to check to see if there are any fugitives or any spies on the train. He freaked out. And so he decided to burn the negatives to save them. So to burn, yes, Emily, to, he burned the negatives to save them. And you, Campbell's writing this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I wonder how sarcastically, what kind of sarcastic comments was running through his head when he was making this comment, writing this comment down. So he is underneath the impression when he writes the article titled The Lost Four Maps of the Confederates for the Century Magazine in 1888, he's underneath the impression that the maps were gone, the maps from the um, Confederate Engineers Department. Um, and a lot of the maps from the, um, that were part of the Army of Northern Virginia, Department of Northern Virginia. What he did not know is that Gilmer had managed to save about two or 300 when Richmond, um, when Richmond fell. And that he had been apparently acquiring a few others throughout the years. And this came to light when his daughter decided to um, donate the manuscript maps from, from the Confederate Engineer Bureau uh, to the Virginia Historical Society, to West Point, and to the Southern Historical Association at, North Car at UNC Chapel Hill. And so the manuscript maps, I think most of them were, were sent off to these three institutions. And the Virginia Historical Society received over 60 of them. And of the maps, the 60 plus maps that they have, uh, several of them, as I'm sure you are aware of, are consist of multiple sheets. So you may have 65 or 66 maps, but I think you have close to like 100 sheets um, around that, around there. I haven't counted all the sheets, but I think that that's where you're at. Um, and so, What's happened in the 20th century is, is the maps um, have been conserved, um, they, have, they have been copied. And so throughout the United States, you find that institutions have received um, uh, blue line prints, copies of the Gilmer maps um, from West Point. Um, you'll find photostat copies at the Library of Congress. We have um, the Library of Virginia purchased the, um, the Gilmer set when it was published in 1989. And, and I can tell you our set is highly used, highly used. And so, and then in the early 2000s, um, a gentleman by the name of Alan M. Voorhees was instrumental in, in encouraging the Virginia Historical Society, the Library of Virginia, and the Library of Congress to provide their Civil War maps of Virginia, to collectively scan them, upload them to the Library of Congress's American Memory website so that folks from around the world could study and view Civil War maps of Virginia. And it's during that, um, and it was for that project that the Gilmer maps were scanned and made available online for patrons to research through the Library of Congress website. And so as you use the Library of Congress website, you will find the Virginia Historical Society's collection of Gilmer maps. 
And um, as you peruse through the maps of Virginia, you'll also find other Gilmer maps and other maps by Campbell that are not, that were not a part of the, the Gilmer gift, um, but are at the Library of Congress, so on and so forth. So they, they are readily available, but like I said, there's nothing like looking at a paper copy because you get the full view of the county um, when you're able to actually view the county map. And as was pointed out, some of the maps within the Gilmer collection are of sections. Um, it have multiple counties on a map. And then there are counties that have not been mapped at all. One of them being um, the city of Newport News where I was born and a great portion of the Tidewater area. And of course the Eastern shore since that was under union occupation for most of the war. So, but the maps that are provided and are available through the Gilmer collection provide a wealth of very helpful information. And I would suggest that you could think of them as a census record, really. They are really a census of those counties from the Civil War because they provide so much cultural and topographical information. So let's talk about the Confederacy's map problem and the Union too, <laughs> because it was a problem experienced by both sides um, in the initial years of the war. So when Gilmer, um, you know, in his position as chief of the, of the Engineer Bureau, he um, was not only overseeing the making of maps, um, he, you know, had to supervise construction of coastal fortifications, build bridges, command, command air labor to build these bridges, find iron for um, use for the railroad lines, and he was also involved in laying out the defenses of Atlanta and Charleston. So in saying all that, he could not be in Richmond all the time overseeing the mapping project. So he had other people that he could rely on in Richmond to do that. Um, and of course, you would have men like Albert Henry Campbell, who's part of the Department of Northern Virginia, who would be very effective in mapping the maps of Virginia that, that Lee's armies would need. So when the war started, and remember, neither one of them came into their positions until 1862. So throughout 1861 and into the early parts of 1862, the Confederacy really didn't have a mapping program. They had one, but I'm not gonna lie and say it was effective. It really wasn't, it was not. And the maps that they had to rely on when the war began were A, out of date. These two maps that you see in front of you are the map of Virginia <laughs> dated 1859. Well, you're going, but it's 1861. If they're published in 1859, they're not out of date. You're, you're not incorrect. <laughs> you're not incorrect. But when you think about an army marching through Virginia, here you have, which is on my right side, this beautiful nine sheet map of Virginia. And let me see if I can get my pointer out here. Here we go, my pointer. Here you go nine plates and you can clearly see the dividing line between each plate. This is a nine sheet map. This is a huge map. It is huge. It's almost six feet, I think by six feet. It is taller than me and it's incredibly much wider than me. And imagine trying to carry something like that in your saddlebag as you're riding through Virginia leading an army. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to carry a nine sheet map anywhere you go. And oftentimes you would find these maps that are this size dissected into several parts so that they could be folded up and carried around with them in a saddlebag. Still, it's cumbersome. So they made sure that a reduced size map was published in four, from four copper plates. And you have one, two, three, four. And I'll give you two seconds to guess which maps the soldiers in the field, the officers in the field prefer to use. Two seconds. Could it be this one? <laughs> the four sheet map, because it's just much easier to use. But how is it going to help an army in the field? It's a it's a it's a it's a reduced size map, much easier to carry in your saddlebag, but it's chock full of information. And it's not going to provide the information that the army needs as it's marching through Virginia. So they clearly saw that there was a need for maps. 
I mean, you needed updated maps. Um, you needed maps that provided the um, topography of, of a county or city. Um, uh, where the peach orchards are located, where's the mill, where's the shoemaker, um, is if there's a, um, and you would hope that there would be, um, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name of this occupation, um, blacksmith in the county as well. And I have a good friend who works at bla as a blacksmith at Colonial Williamsburg. You wouldn't think I would forget that profession. But they, you know, they're looking for that kind of information because they need it. Well, as I said earlier, um, the Confederates were not the only ones who had a mapping problem. The Union did too. And the Union, <laughs> the Coast Survey was responsible for making a lot of maps for the Union, as were topical, topographical engineers in the field. They too were, were relying on the reduced size map of Northern Virginia. And here is one that was reproduced by some reproduction method. Um, for the Coast Survey and was used in the field by Union officers. And we managed to acquire this a few years ago. Um, and it was, it was, of course, number 70. But just to give you a sense, it's not just a Confederacy problem, it's a Union problem too. And so if you're looking for maps, and I don't know why this is not going to go away. Um, if you're looking for you know, maps, the Lloyd's official map of the state of Virginia would give you the impression that it is an official map. It is not, it is a map for commercial sale only. And you certainly had generals, there was a, a letter from a, a union general to his daughters explaining if you get, a, if you acquire Lloyd's map of the state of Virginia, it will give you a general idea of where our armies are marching. And that's about as good as you'll get, just a general idea. And then there are other maps that were available like this one right here, this map of Henrico, County, which, which was actually published in 1853. It was surveyed um, by James Kiley, published actually in, in Richmond. It's one of the few county maps um, that you'll find from Virginia. Uh, very few Virginia counties were mapped in the 1850s and published to this extent. Um, Loudoun County is, is one of them. And I believe Dinwiddie County may be another one that was published at this, at like the one that you see. The Henrico map was highly sought after by the Union and the Confederates. In fact, when you look at the earlier, uh, when you look at maps produced for the, um, uh, for the campaign into Richmond um, in 1862, the Union's, the Union Army and the Coast Survey based a lot of their maps on the Smith map of Henrico County. It served as a base map for many of the maps of Henrico produced for the conf that conflict in 1862. So here's the Gilmer map. Um, and it's a, it's a survey of a part of Chesterfield. And it was done by, and let me see if I can get this screen out of the way here. Show grid, show, here we go. Here we go. Um, it's a survey of a part of Chesterfield County, Virginia, and it was made underneath the direction of A.H. Campbell. And you had a P.W. Kerner and a Mr. Blackford and a, and a Mr. Castle who were engineers who probably did the surveying work. If they didn't do the surveying work, they were responsible for drafting the map from surveys produced in the field. And so when these maps were, were made, Mr. Campbell um, had very specific instructions that he wanted um, the surveyors to follow when they were recording um, the information that his draftsmen and his cartographers would need to, to make the, the manuscript maps um, for counties in Virginia. And he told them that they had to be, they had to, spay, to, to pay very specific attention to the roads in the county, the creeks, the streams, the churches, the crossroads, the bridges, the ferries, and the fords. They had to make sure that they, that they identified 
the roads in the county, the creeks, the streams, the churches, the crossroads, the bridges, the ferries, and the forks. And they were supposed to talk to the locals to figure out or find out for sure what the local names of the terrain features were. So they had to interview residents as, as, as they surveyed the county just to make sure that they were using the appropriate local place names. And within days of his appointment uh, in 1862, he sent out two or three field parties into the countryside around Richmond um, to create a, a, an accurate map of the environs of, of the city of Richmond as because as we all know, that was the capital of the Confederacy. And the topographic engineers that were working underneath him began to produce maps. And the maps that they produced from this department were at the same level and of the same caliber as those produced by the Union. And granted, the Confederacy had issues. They, they had issues with supplies. Um, they had issues getting drafting paper. Um, they actually had to send someone to England to purchase um, uh, colors with which to color the maps, to get the ink needed, to get the drafting paper. And, and fortunately um, for them, they looked out when, um, as, as the general um, was exiting um, Richmond in um, General McClellan, as he was exiting the Richmond area in 1862, they left like several hundred yards of drafting paper behind. And so the Confederates were able to acquire that and use that drafting paper for their own purposes. And so oftentimes what you'll find with the Gilmer maps, um, if they're original, um, like say a first copy, they may be on drafting paper um, and not traditional paper as we think of it. So his department um, was making maps. The Confederacy also made sure that there were topographical engineers with the armies that were also surveying and mapping and providing maps for, for the officers. And in the case of Stonewall Jackson, he had Jedediah Hotchkiss to help him out. And Jedediah Hotchkiss was a fantastic amateur cartographer. And I say amateur because he was not a trained engineer. He had not received any type of surveying or drawing um, education from West Point. Most of the, the men who served as engineers in the Confederacy probably had some sort of West Point training. The exception to that would have been Jedediah Hotchkiss, who was brilliant. Um, Stonewall Jackson loved him, but you, but that's an example of Stonewall Jackson having um, a surveyor working with him to provide the maps that he needed in the field. So the Confederacy had people working in Richmond, drafting maps to send out to the field. They had engineers, topographical engineers with the armies who were mapping that. And then of course, um, surveyors, civilian and private surveyors that were paid um, by the Confederacy to, to um, survey and map the land. What you find is that the Gilmer maps to uh, most of them were produced at a scale of one inch to 80,000 inches on the ground. So as you look at, at the Gilmer maps, um, you will find that um, most of them are, you know, one inch on the map equals 80,000 inches on the ground. Um, and I'm not sure how many miles that is I, or how much feet that, that consists of. I didn't have a chance to, to do the conversion before this. Most of them were going to be oriented north and a good portion, or in fact, I think all of the maps that were donated by Gilmer's daughter to the Virginia Historical Society have a statement on them indicating that they were presented to the Virginia Historical Society by his daughter, Mrs. J.F. Minnis of Savannah, Georgia. Almost all of them are gonna have that information on it. And a lot of them are going to be oriented north uh, and you have a, a compass rose of sorts identifying the direction um, where north is. So let's take a look, a closer look at this map of Chesterfield. And the roads are in red. And you'll notice oftentimes with these maps, um, the originals, not, not the photostat copies, um, the roads are in red. The railroads are oftentimes in red and they have a very specific pattern 
For example, this right here oftentimes indicates a railroad line. And then of course, you can see here where you have roads intersecting together in red. On a, there, the topographic information is displayed in hatchers and also I would say pictorially. Here is an example of hatchers right here. The hatchers are used to give you an idea of the contour of the land and also um, uh, uh, a feature's height. You'll find on these maps a number of place names. Um, for example, here is Poor House. I don't know if that's actually a reference to an actual poorhouse or if that's just the name of a locality. I'm sure someone in Grieven knows. Um, if you look further down, you're going to see other names of, of residents. Um, here's Mr. Jackson's Mill. If you're an army marching through Chesterfield, it's very helpful to know where their mills are located. It's very helpful. And of course, the waterways. Now on this particular map, the waterways look like they were drawn in black ink with the great many of the Gilmer maps um, in, in the collection. Most of them were drawn in, in blue ink. And as I mentioned earlier on these maps, you're gonna find um, mills identified here, for example, is Bradley's mill. Oh, and here's Reedy Branch Road. In case any of you um, were looking for Reedy Branch road in 1863 Chesterfield and then the maps also try to identify if there are any industries in a particular county and down here at the very bottom of Chesterfield near Petersburg um, you can find a reference to the cotton factory um, here is a reference to Ettrick suburbs you can also see another factory mentioned here just above the Swift Creek village and of course um, topographical features. I think these are wooded areas. Um, you will find orchards if on, on, on Gilmer maps as well. And then of course, up in the Northern part of Chesterfield, here's a reference to the Virginia Iron Company. And of course, we all know that there were a number of coal fields in Chesterfield. And if you want to find the location of those, the La Prade map of Chesterfield from 1888 list a bunch of them. And of course, churches. I can't forget to mention churches. Um, the churches are, are identified and there's a specific symbol that they use to show churches. And that right there is, is the symbol you almost universally used on all of the maps. Oh, and another mill right there, Mr. Tompkins Mill. And last but not least, Manchester. You know, it just shows the grid for Manchester. It does not, unfortunately, show the, the lots, provide the names of the buildings. It just doesn't do that, but it does show you the grid structure. And then you can see the roads coming into Manchester, like the Manchester Turnpike or the, or the Old Coal Railroad. Here's Warwick Road. And then Broad, Reek, Broad Rock Racecourse. Virginians love to race the horses, and here's proof of it. This, um, this is a, quite a bit of information to, to have on a map. Um, and it really is a wonderful snapshot of, of, of Chesterfield County as it looked in 1863. Now, the other map um, that, I, that I've decided to present because it's so colorful is this map of King William County. This is a map that is not mapped or was not mapped a lot. <laughs> and so to find a map of it from the Civil War era is, um, well, let's, let's just put it this way. People who are conducting genealogical research in King William are, are happy to find that, we have, that there is a map of King William from the Civil War period available. And this one was completed in 1865. And some of the Gilmer some of the Gilmer maps have they were created with this color or they were created with this color or they were copied and maybe the color got lost but anyway this seems to indicate if they had the materials available the the draftsman did try to use color to to show information to provide information about a county and like this one um 
the there is a scale of bars down here and what i have found is that a great many of the gilmer maps have a bar scale so if you were to blow up the map with the bar scale you can continue to figure out what the scale of the map is um, this particular map was drawn by a mr blackford not the same blackford who was engaged in drawing and putting together the chesterfield map two different blackfords here I have not figured out if they come from the same family or not. That is a mystery. <laughs> I can't figure out who they are yet, but this is not the same Blackford who was engaged in helping to put together the map of Chesterfield. But you'll notice up here that the same message that this is a gift from Gilmer's daughter to the Virginia Historical Society is here. And of course, it's oriented north with the, with the nifty compass rows. And of course, the counties alongside of it are mentioned and named as well. I suspect that the title was right here, but at some point, uh, that part got torn off. And so if there was any other individual engaged in making the map along with Mr. Blackford, we don't know who they are. So, he quite nicely provided a little note explaining how the colors are used on the map. Um, it's about the county is 310 square miles. Um, he explains that the wooded land is noted by green tents, um, open land by burnt ochre, um, public roads are shown by double red lines, Neighborhood and farm roads are shown by single lines, paths are shown by dotted line. And that's something to remember as you look at Gilmer maps. They are not only showing the public roads shown, but they're showing the neighborhood, they're showing the paths, they're showing the farm roads. If it's just a horse path, they try to show it. And so you, you're really getting a full and complete picture of the county's road network when you're looking at a, at a Gilmer map, AKA Campbell map. And of course, with this one, um, because King William County is surrounded by two rivers, the Mattapanai and the Pamunkey River, you're going to find a lot of ferries. The roads are in red. You're going to find fords and ferries on the Pamunkey side, on the Mattapanai side. Any of you who have heard of Aylet's Warehouse, well, there it is, once again. And down here is Colonel Aylet's property. And you can see the wooded pockets in green, um, ochre faded ochre, I guess. <laughs> um, and then of course, significant, a number of place names being used. Um, what is interesting about um, King William is that there are two um, American Indian reservations. One um, was located on the Northwestern section of the county. And of course it's, it's pointed out here. I would also like to point out the location of Colossae Church. The reason why I point this out is a friend of mine was married in this chapel um, a good 15 years ago. Yes, the church is still standing and yes, it is still operational and apparently going strong. So don't be surprised if you find some church names and the churches are still, still in use and still uh, own the same own property or the property that they owned in the 1860s. Um, let's see. And here, down here towards the, the other end um, is the location of the, um, the other um, American Indian town. And you'll notice that the, um, rich, the Richmond and York River Railroad cross over at White House into King William and makes its way all the way down into West Point. And when I initially put together the snippet, um, the West Point, um, West Point was actually shown. But as you look at this map of, of um, King William County, you get a very good idea of its topo topographical features, which is information that an army would need um, if it was going to be marching through the county. Um, they need to know where the fields are located. They need to know where the roads are located. They need to know where the main roads are located so that they know where to send the, the soldiers and the armies marching. You don't want to send the army down a narrow lane. I, that, I just don't think that would be a good idea. So you're looking for avenues in which to move the armies across the county. So um, that is pretty much what I had to say. 
Um, I could talk more about this, um, but I'm not quite sure what time it is, but um, it's certainly time for questions if anybody has them. It is 747. So cool. we've got we've got plenty of time. If anyone has any questions, feel free to tap, type them into the chat box. I haven't seen any yet. No, oh, is there a Gilmer map for Norfolk? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, unfortunately there is not. Um, I would like to show you a map. Um, that was completed by the Confederacy. And you can tell that it's not a Gilmer Campbell map. Um, and it's at the Library of Congress. And I'm just gonna blow this up so you can see the differences between the two of them. Let me, um... here we go. While you're doing that, there's a question, how about with County? I'd have to check the list, but I don't think so. Now, can you see the difference between here? This is the map of the <laughs> lower valley. Um, as you look at this, there's 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 a there's a difference. This is from the Library of Congress. It's a Confederate map. We suspect it was um, surveyed in the field and then produced um, in the Confederate Engineer Department for use. You know, they got the surveying information, sent it to an office. Possibly the one, um, because it's a map of the lower valley, it may have been Jedediah Hotchkiss's office. And it may have been his men who um, compiled this, this, this map. You can, it, it, it has Hotchkiss's style, but it, does, it is providing the same information that Campbell wanted the surveyors to acquire. Um, the roads, the rivers, the um, use of, of, of hatchers to um, show the mountains in topographical detail but it's not the same as those that were created at the, with the, at the Confederate Engineer Bureau's office. So. Another question is what counties are included? Now, what Griva has for sale is listed on our website. That is not all of the Gilmer maps. Um, so Cassandra, if you could tell us where there's a list of the That's Gilmer That's a good maps. question. Um, I, I know that the Library of Congress has maps from West Point and the Virginia Historical Society on its website. And then if you go to the Southern Historical Collection for UNC, I believe they have all of them up there as well. Um, and there is a link to I, that on, on Grievous website. Okay, excellent. And so there's a, there's a handy dandy list that we have at the Library of Virginia and I did make a copy of it, um, which identifies the counties that were mapped and the regions that were mapped. Um, I don't know if that list came with the maps that you acquired or not, but I know we have an introduction um, David, provided by David the DHS. David's shaking his head no, that's <laughs> we, did, we did not get that list. Oh, well, let me assist you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yes, um, I do have it. Um, it's not on this computer, but it's on my work computer, and I have a PDF form that I can that I can send to you Ooh. that identifies the counties from the Virginia Historical Society, and it even includes a map showing which which counties are included, <laughs> and it's color coded too. So, I hope nice. no one's colorblind <laughs> uh, because they did it in red and green, which is not what I would have done, but that's what they did. Yes. Next question, how were Gilmer and Campbell able to collect the names of households so rapidly? Well, they, the surveyors who were in the field did it. The topographical engineers or the surveyors that they hired went around and, and they um, tried to figure out or tried to guess where battles might take place based upon the movements of the armies. So they would oftentimes send um, surveying parties in advance to start sketching a, a, a county ahead of time in preparation. Um, and I do know that they were also using the John Wood maps. Um, many of you are probably familiar with the John Wood map collection. Um, the state hired John Wood to oversee the creation of county maps of Virginia, um, which were created by him and by Blue Colts between 1819 and 1825. And there were, I think, 96 counties that were mapped. 
And those maps were then used to put together the 1827 map of Virginia, the very large nine sheet map. <laughs> it's huge. It's very pretty, but it, man, it's huge. Um, and so the state at the time of the, the Civil War began had all of those wood maps um, because I found documentation from the Confederate Engineer Bureau um, indicating that the state of Virginia's archives actually had the wood maps for New Kent County and Charles City County. And they sent them to the Department of the Army of Northern Virginia because they needed them to create the maps. We can't find those maps. Those maps are no longer extant. Oh, but we no. know from, you know, from um, communication from 1862 that they were available. And I don't know if they just weren't returned, if a soldier took them home with them, if they were sent back to Richmond. Did a did a soldier walk off with them during the you know crazy days of the fall of Richmond in 1865? I don't know. So I suspect that, and I agree, they did an incredible job of getting that information so quickly. But I suspect um, the fact that they were probably Southerners. And I also wonder how many of those topographical engineers may have been from the area and may have knew people as well, may have made it easier. I'm just speculating when I say that, but that, you know, that could be a possibility. Okay. Next question, can I bring my map in once the coast is clear and have you interpret symbols on my Gilmer maps? You need to make an appointment. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the answer is yes. Um, um, you'll, you'll have to make an appointment. Um, the Library of Virginia is open um, to the public um, Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And um, you would be coming to special collections, so you would need to contact me to make an appointment okay. to do that. But the answer is yes, Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4. Yay. Um, are the maps listed on Griva's inventory, all the extant maps? Uh, the answer is no to that. Um, we've already sold out of some, and I don't know that we got all of them to begin with. Any map available for Stanton or Augusta County? And would the maps show hospitals and cemeteries? They would show the location of cemeteries. They do. I've seen cemeteries located on them. Um, I've even seen ruined structures identified oh, wow. on some of the maps, which I was like, really ruined structures in 1864? But okay, <laughs> <laughs> ruined structures. Um, yes, and as far as hospitals, that's a good question. I mean, if it's, is it a field hospital that's permanent? You know, is it a permanent hospital site or is it a field hospital? I'd have to take a look at the map to answer that question. Okay. That's a good question. And I think there's one of Augusta. There is one of Rockbridge. And I think there's, I think there's one of Rockbridge in three sheets. And then I think there's a single sheet of Rockbridge and then a map of Rockbridge in three sheets. And I think there's one of Augusta, but don't quote me on that. I have to take a look at the list. Okay. Do names on the map represent people who own property or who lived on a property and may have rented? Both. Cool. Both. I, 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 I'm understanding that I'm under DC understanding. I mean, I could be wrong, but I think it, it shows the name of the owner. And then I also think if it's someone renting, I think it shows their name, the name of the renter. I could be wrong on that, but I don't think I am. And if they were using independent, it might vary from map to map too. Right. Um, and ref I guess this is a response to the question about with County earlier. Someone says there is a Western and Southwestern Virginia map. That would be the one I would need. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't think we have any prints of those. <laughs> Are the Gilmer maps of places in North Carolina other than those counties along the Northeast boundary lines between Virginia and North Carolina? I don't think so. I so think it's mainly none, none of the western counties. It's just going to be the eastern ones. It's just if if they are of North Carolina, there are the northeastern counties that border that border Virginia. Okay. Now, I, wouldn't it be awesome if they had created a map of the Outer Banks <laughs> or Western Virginia? I mean, Western North Carolina. That would have been that would have been great. <laughs> That's where all my ancestors are from. I would have loved that one. Oh, well. well, my well, my dad's family is from Robinson County, North Carolina, and they were in Warwick County, 
before 1750. Wow. So his generation was the first one to leave North Carolina. Nice. Mm, yes. What counties are, are not included in the Gilmer maps? Some of the maps are of areas of Virginia and not a county. Oh. Right. And so if you, the, the sheet sheet that we have, um, it looks like when the, the Gilmer maps include a large portion of central Virginia down into south central Virginia over into, into Richmond, um, down into uh, Petersburg, Dinwiddie, and over into the valley. But it's the western portions, there's a real gap for the western, ultra west, western parts of the state. And then there's also a gap for the eastern sections that were underneath Union occupation beginning in 1862. So that's the reason why you're not gonna find a map of Warwick County or Elizabeth City County or Princess Anne or Nansemond or um, Norfolk County, which is present day Chesapeake, city of Chesapeake, because they were underneath, a lot of those sections were underneath Union occupation. And plus, I mean, I can't see anybody sending anyone through the dismal swamp. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's just tough to go through. I mean, do you really want to send your army through the dismal swamp? I, I would think you'd want to avoid that at all costs. You Unless you're trying to, to avoid the army. Huh? <laughs> you need a map to know it was there. <laughs> well, yeah. Now, if you're avoiding an army <laughs> or avoiding someone, it's a great place to go. <laughs> but, is there a map of Bedford, Virginia? I think there is. Hold on just a second. Hold on. here. I actually went through the Library of Congress, the maps are in the Library of Congress and looked at all of them. So let me see here. There's um, anyone interested in Brunswick? There's one of Brunswick. Um, Birdie County, Amelia, Cumberland, Dinwiddie, Rockbridge, I already mentioned that. Anyone interested in Caroline County? You're in luck. <laughs> Anyone interested in Greensville County? You're in luck. Um, Botetourt County, Orange County and Albemarle County, definitely Gilmer Sheets. Nottaway, Goochland, Louisa, Chesterfield, Fluvanna. Botetourt, Charlotte, walk here. Montgomery, there is one for Montgomery County. There's one for Powhatan County. Prince Edward County, Roanoke County as well to getting some of those, those Western counties. Um, and then it looks like there's a combo for Orange, Spotsylvania, Stafford and Rappahannock. And yes, there is one for Bedford County, 1864. And Mr. Izzard, I-Z-A-R-D, is the name of the, uh, the Lieutenant Engineer who, who drafted the map. So if you're looking for that Gilmer map of Bedford, Mr. Izzard, I-Z-A-R-D, is responsible for it. And I think he's also responsible for Albemarle County too. So, um, so yes, looks like there are two Next. maps of bed. Cool. Next question. They showed some property owners, but not all. Is there a significance to those who were shown and who is not? Would it indicate which of the farmers were Union or Confederate sympathizers? No. I haven't seen anything indicating whether or not they're Union or Confederate sympathizers. Um, we know in William, I live in Williamsburg. Virginia, and of course we know who the Union sympathizers were because he, well, the guy became mayor during the Union occupation. And let's just say he wasn't warmly received after the war. But anyway, um, no, I've never seen anything indicating that they, the Union and Confederate sympathizers were acknowledged on the maps. Um, they, they do a good job of showing a lot of property owners, and I don't know why they didn't show every single property owner. I, I'm wondering if, 
if larger plantation sites were named just because they own so much property. And if you need sustenance for the army marching through the field, you're probably gonna find it at that, that planter's farm faster than you would at the smaller farmer. I, I'm not quite sure why, and they may not have included um, everyone okay. for sure, but it's a good question. Is there a good book on how they actually made maps in the 19th century? It's not one source. That's the problem. <laughs> It's not one source because the 19th century, you have maps being made from copper plates at the beginning of the century. Um, and the copper plate process is, is, is really nifty. You get a copper plate, you hire someone to etch it, actually etch the map into the copper plate. And then you have someone who's gonna pour ink into the copper plate etchings. And then you're gonna put map or, you know, paper over that, not a map, paper to make the map. And then you're gonna have a print press with a roller rolling over it to get the ink into it. And oftentimes the paper would be wet so that the ink would you know, stick to the paper better. But as you move into the, the 1820s and 1830s, the, the graphic process begins to take over. And so how map, maps are made changes. They change from copper plates, which is expensive, to lithograph stones. And so the process just, it just changes. And the lithograph process is what is used throughout a good portion of the 19th century by the commercial publishers. Now, I will tell you um, that during the war, the Coast Survey was still making maps with copper plates when the war began in 1860. And they had to find a faster means of making maps during the war. And so they both, the Union and the Confederacy, came up with methods to reproduce the maps in the field using chemical processes. The Confederacy came up with um, sun prints, and the Union um, were using some sort of photographic method as well to recreate maps for use in the field. And so, um, so they they did they were you know they were making they were adapting and 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 making maps as fast as they could um, for for the for the field officers, um, but the lithograph process is really in place through the end of the nineteenth century, and there are there are books that explain the lithograph process, and then of course you have variations of that as well, but it, it's very interesting. Um, I was in an antique shop a couple of years ago and someone had found some um, lithograph stones that they had been using to produce bank notes from wow. or a bank in Connecticut. I think someone had thrown them in the river and I don't know how this, this antique collector or antique dealer got a hold of them, but he had them and he had them for sale. But anyway, um, it's cool. I'm afraid I didn't answer your question very well. Um, <laughs> but you gave him, gave him some ideas of things to look for, I think so. Yes. All right. Next question. If we assume that all of the maps now available are digital, who has the best digital copies? The Library of Virginia, the Virginia Historical <laughs> Society, the Library of Congress, North Carolina? <laughs> who has the best digital management asset system is what it boils down to. <laughs> um, the Library of Congress, um, I like their interface. Um, we are in the process of, um, tra of transferring our digital images from um, Digital to Rosetta. And so I'm hoping within the year that our maps will be available through Rosetta and, and it looks like it's a much better system than what we have right now. And we have managed to put quite a few maps online in our Virginia memory portal. <laughs> it is not easy to get to, but they are there. <laughs> Oh, cool. <laughs> and, and, and I can show you how to get to them if everybody's interested um, before the end of the evening. Yeah, um, sure, why not? The Library of Congress has an excellent collection. I like their, their interface. The, um, the Boston Public Library has a really good map collection as well. And, and I like their interface. It's the Leventhal Map Center. And then the Newberry Library has an 
excellent map collection. It's just most of them are not online, but it is worth checking their catalog to see what they have because their, their map collection is just wonderful. And then um, there's the Rumsey map collection, the David Rumsey map collection through, that's at Stanford University in California. They, Mr. Rumsey had this awesome collection, huge, gigantic collection and um, gave it to Stanford and they have managed to, what they have done is incredible. A lot of the maps are geo-referenced. You can get to them. Um, you know, once you get to the Rumsey Map Center site, it's searchable. I will tell you in my researches for Virginia, they do not have a, um, their collection of 18th century maps of Virginia is, you know, it's not their, it's not the collection strength. If you're looking for 19th century maps of Virginia or basically anywhere in the United States, that is an excellent collection. Excellent. Okay, um, I have a question. Which maps have you sold out of? That would just be teasing you guys. We probably shouldn't answer that. You probably don't want to ask that, but uh, I will direct you to email the address on the uh, order form if you really want to know. Um, I'm told there is an Augusta map. Excellent. The Gilmer map I have of Hertford County, North Carolina shows slave quarters of the larger enslavers. That's fantastic because you will find footprints of that. And of course, as you know, insurance companies didn't always insure properties in the county. You had to live in a city or town. And the Mutual Assurance Society of Virginia actually insured county properties until about 1820. And then they said, no, can do. And then that's when they just started insuring properties in the cities and towns. But yes, they did. In fact, um, I have to write a biography for one of my classes. And the gentleman um, had a farm in Stafford County that he insured by the Mutual Assurance Society in 1806. And I'm sure they wrote him in 1819 and said, we are discontinuing our coverage <laughs> of you in 1820. <laughs> so, um, but yes, yes, that's awesome. I mean, because if you can find a footprint like that, that is fantastic. It's great, except she says, unfortunately, there's an error on that map where two large enslavers' names are reversed. Those names are Bynum and Myrick. Oops. It's, still, I know. it's, great, that, it's great that they're there. <laughs> how, about right. counties, how about counties that were Virginia, now West Virginia? No, they, they're not a part of the Gilmer collection. When I went through the Library of Congress um, website, I didn't see any from what is, you know, what is now West Virginia? Um, that's not to say that there are not maps of West Virginia um, that were made during the war. In fact, D.H. Struthers, those of you who might be f familiar with him, he was a well-known um, uh, writer um, in the 19th century. He wrote a lot for Harper's Weekly. I forget his, Port Crayon was was his his name, Port Crayon. and um, he actually worked for the union and he mapped maps, you know, counties of West Virginia. So you'll actually find some of his on our website and also in the Library of Congress. But I don't think you find any from the, what is the Gilmer collection? Okay. Does the map from, for Prince William County survive? Hold on. <laughs> Let me check my red notebook. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, there is a wood map for Prince William from 1820, but that's not your question. <laughs> King William, yes, as you know, because I just used this as an example. <laughs> um, King George, um, I don't see one for King William. In fact, um, if I'm recalling correctly, I didn't see anything for, um, and, and maybe it's in the North Carolina collection, but I didn't see any for um, Fairfax or King William or Loudoun. And I think Loudoun was Union occupied for most of the war anyway, I think. Um, or I know that a lot of the residents of Loudoun County were Union sympathizers. Um, 
before the war and during the war. So from what I've seen on the Library of Congress website, I haven't seen any. Um, and they, they've done a good job of showing maps from West Point, the West Point collection and from the, the Virginia Historical Society. That's the Museum of, the Virginia Museum of History and Culture. Or is it the Museum of Virginia History and Culture? I still Virginia, call it the VHS. Vir yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know what you're talking about. But I, I know, Vir I know. Virgin Virginia's, Virginia's first, I know that. Okay, uh, I do know if you type in VHS, it still <laughs> comes up in a Google search. Um, oh, yes. So now I see Prince George, um, Culpepper, Madison. I don't see King William. Okay. Well, speaking of I the see Union. Campbell. Oh, I take that back. There is one. Oh, cool. It's at West Point. Okay. There is one for King William on the Library of Congress website. The original is at West Point and it's King William or Prince William? King William. No, yes. Yeah, the question was about Prince William. Prince William. Oh, of course. <sighs> no, I have no. I <laughs> check the UNC site. Maybe there's one there, but no. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Well, speaking of Union maps, the next question is, are there Union maps for those areas occupied by the Union Army, like Tidewater? There, there are maps of the peninsula that were created for the um, peninsula campaign. If there are any, it would be at the National Archives. And it's record group 77. If you go, if you go to the National Archives carto cartography homepage, I think they have from that page, they have a link to maps that, that have been scanned and placed online. And they have a specific link to Civil War maps. And I believe most of those are in record group 77. If there are any, it would be there. Are there instructions still surviving that were provided to local surveyors similar to census takers? I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. I know that the instructions that Campbell provided, they're in the, um, I believe he put them into his article that was published for the Century Magazine. The one that was published in 1888. I think he has the instructions in there. And I know that um, there is a military engineer magazine. They did a lot of work on, on Confederate engineers and a couple of articles on Confederate mapping. I don't recall seeing any, any footnotes or any indication that they came across extant instructions from the time period. There are maps surrounding Floyd County, but I could not find Floyd County on Library of Congress. Is there a Floyd County map? I don't think so. There is, but not from the Gilmer collection. <laughs> what is the average size of the maps that Greva has for sale? I'm gonna have David field that one because it's, it's, it's mentioned on the page on the website, but I can't bring it up at the moment. David? What was the question? What's the size of the maps that Greba has for sale? Um, almost all of them are two feet by, by three feet. Uh, there are two maps that are a little larger than that. Uh, they're like uh, 28 inches by 39 inches. Okay. All the others are two feet by three feet. And it's pretty hefty archival poster board. So it's pretty stiff paper. Okay. We'll still need a magnifying class. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> if you're looking at the paper copy, you will need a magnifying glass. Yeah, that's one benefit of the digital is you can zoom in, but, but you can't really get a good overview. They both have their advantages and disadvantages, I'm sure. Well, I've run through the questions and I've got to thank you very much, Cassandra, very interesting. This, ha that, this has been a fascinating talk, that's for sure. Um, did you want me to show you how to get to the Library of Virginia's map collections or send that instructions be, by email? That, both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, if, you, if you want to show us, that would be great. And then I, I, could, I could figure it out from the recording and write up instructions if you'd like. Okay. Let me go ahead. And um, since you're already sharing your internet browser, why not? 
Okay, so I want to go to the Library of Virginia website. And um, what you'll want to do from here is go down to the heading that says, you know, the heading for the public, and then go down to the link to Virginia Memory. Okay. And this is what I like to do. I just go to collections A to Z. And then I go to M for maps. And then I go here. And this is what I'm hoping Rosetta will, will take care of. It just automatically puts up all the maps that we have. I, I don't like that. So what I do is I go back to map collections, click here, and then I can see which collection I want to go through. Uh, okay. And we have about, we have a small but very nice Civil War map collection here. If any of you are interested in seeing some of the manuscript and published maps that we have. And we also have some fine examples of sun print maps, those maps printed in the field using the sun print process. Um, what you may find helpful um, are, is our collection of city maps. Uh, we've managed to put up the 1817 Richard Young map of Richmond. Cool. That is there now. Very cool. Yes, and this is one instance where you should be glad there's a digital copy online because you can blow it up. <laughs> are you Get ready everything. for us to, Sandy, are you ready for us to index it? If you want it, hey, that would be awesome. Well, we talked about that one time. I, I would be happy. Let me show you where it is. I think it's on the first page. And um, let me see here. I think that would be awesome. Did you hear that, Griva folks? <laughs> yeah, Emily just set us up a new Griva project. <laughs> if I can find it here, because I don't know if you guys have have or have not seen it. So you must be on the There are probably page. enough new folks who didn't see it when okay. you and Leslie came. Okay. Well, at least you're getting a good idea of what we've got on our pages as I try to find it. There it is. It's number 60 in the city maps collection for any of you who want to go back. <laughs> so here we go. And then um, let's see if we can do this. What I like to do is pull it up like this. If you see what I'm doing. No. no, no you need what do you do? Wait, we, we don't, we, we're just still seeing the page. Okay. Can you see the map yet? No. No. It's probably a separate window. And that's the window that I see. No, Are we're still we're, 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 we're still seeing the Library of Virginia page. If you opened it to a new window, we're just seeing the original window. Okay. So maybe you could open it to a new tab and then click on the new tab. That's what I'm gonna do. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, come on now. That's what I'm gonna do. Open a new tab. Cool. Now can now, you see it? Now we can, well, it's loading, but yeah, we can see something anyway. Okay. <laughs> There As we you go. Can see, it's a large map. Um, but what you can do is you can uh, zoom in. And it was in horrible shape. And, and Griva nicely helped us, <laughs> very nicely helped us conserve it. And Leslie gave this awesome presentation about how she conserved it. Um, and I'm sure she'd love to give that talk again. I'm, I'm not volunteering her. <laughs> but she did an awesome job explaining the steps she took she took to conserve it. Folks, when we went before she conserved it, it was falling apart like popcorn. And, and what she did is she managed to save what she could. Um, the map was still on its original linen. And um, I don't remember if she removed the original linen or not. But here you go. I mean, you're you're this this is it. I mean, if you guys decide to transcribe it, wow. That would be awesome. Can we, talk to you, can we talk to you sometime about the, mm -hmm. the logistics of doing that? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Because the transcription would be 
project for this would be very helpful. Yeah, yeah. 1817 oh, Richmond, before the first city directory. Wow. Right, and then here I am moving. And as you can see, the street names, I mean, Marshall Street. Um, let me see if I can move this over here. There you go. And if, you know, I'm sure if I, if I worked a little bit longer, I could find Capitol Square because that's my marker. That's what I always look to, to orient, you know, to try to orientate myself where I am in Richmond on this map because there are so many um, missing spaces. And the reason why these spaces are, it's, it's like this is because <clears throat> it was in the basement of Richmond City Hall. And they had kept a number of their maps in the basement, some of them on the floor. And this is what happens when you don't take care of your maps. And I don't think that they were aware of what they had or else they would not have left them in that condition. And, and what I can say is that um, y'all know who Makaija Bates is, right? Most of y'all, the, the famous Quaker surveyor, he, um, his family, it was a family of surveyors who worked for Richmond City. Well, his grandson, um, Frank T. Bates, made a, made, made a copy of this map sometime in the late 19th century, and we do have that copy. Okay. So it's very nice to compare that with this, and it helps you fill in the holes. So um, Rob, there Robin, are, are, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, Robin asks, how does one transcribe a map? And well, that's that's what Emily and Cassandra are talking about, talking about offline. So, yeah, that's a that's a that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very different that's, for transcribing question, paper. Yeah, that's the question about the logistics. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I was going to say um, we do also have a number of county maps online as well. Um, and then once um, once the maps have been transferred to Rosetta, then we and then I'm going to find out how we put maps into Rosetta, and then you'll find more maps online. But we haven't been able to add any because they've been having to manually transfer materials from our current digital management system over to the new one. And hopefully, once that's up and running, they'll tell me what I need to do, and then. We could split it, we'll be putting maps up back up online again. But we do have about 67 county maps, and I use that and, and use that phrase loosely because um, if it was not a city map and it was a county map ish, I put it in this section. And if it included county name or the word county in the title, I went very liberal in the description for county and put that in there because I was trying to think about how researchers would think. Thank so, you. We appreciate that. So um, there you go. And here is a really cool map of Palatine by La Prade, by the way. Um, but yes, and there are oyster surveys and such in this section because, again, I couldn't think of any other place to put them but the county section. <laughs> so, um, so yes. Okay. One last question: Are there any other map collections that indicate landowners uh, or renters? The La Prade maps of Chesterfield I, from 1888, I think that might name some runners, but I think for that, your best bet would be a city directory, wouldn't it? But then if it's a county that you're researching, there may not be a directory. Exactly. Exactly. And then if there's an atlas produced in the 1880s, there were a few counties for which atlases were created they did place the name of the su subscribers down. And I think oftentimes they did name the landowners, but they didn't create those atlases for every county. Okay. So unfortunately, again, I don't have a good answer. <laughs> unmute. Oh. So. I finally figured out how to unmute myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Pat, did you have a question? <laughs> Yes, I wanted to ask about Prince George County. Um, it's late, so. Hmm. 
she's checking the red book it could be i mean prince george is just east of petersburg i i did look uh, somewhere on that list and i found that you have a, a map of surrey and a map of Petersburg, and that map of Petersburg may also include Prince George. Right. Because when the Union troops came south across the James River, it was east of Richmond and into Prince George County. We do have a survey of Prince George. Hmm. There is there is a Gilmore map for Prince George County. Yes, I got to see that I, because yes. my great great grandfather's pre-civil war house is on that map it's yes there is a survey of prince george county 1863 mm -hmm. and it looks like the assistant engineer's name was mr summers okay s-o-m-m-e-r-s -M -M -E thank you you're welcome it looks like a mr Patton was a draftsman okay Well, I have seen, I have a copy of a Civil War map of Prince George County, or it's probably more than just Prince George, but it has, it has the, my family's farms identified where they're located. Cool. Well, the last comment other than some more thank yous is it's been wonderful to hear another of your present presentations. I miss working with you on Rhodes Scholar. Shirley, and I'm going to pronounce her, her last name wrong, Rudin or Rudin, R-U-D-I-N. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I, I do enjoy, I'm very glad that Zoom exists because I actually like giving presentations through Zoom. What I really like is the PowerPoint is in front of me. <laughs> so I don't forget to turn slides. <laughs> but no, I'm, I mean, and that's, you know, that I'm, I'm glad that, that we were able to do this through Zoom. We are too. We thank you very much for coming. And it's been a very interesting and informative presentation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting a couple so of, I love Zooms <laughs> in the comments too. Well, thanks for sticking around for an hour and a half. Oh, it's been <laughs> great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Maps. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> yeah, the maps are always our most popular uh, talks, that's for sure. I can stop sharing here. Here we go. Okay. And here we all are. <laughs> yep. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. Well, thank you, Cassandra. You're welcome. Thank you. Stop recording. <laughs>